on the boat. And early on, God gave the um, the planet the power to conduct this, the earth. And now the world is following the influence of the of the planet of the. Uh, and they, they assume that God is no longer involved in running the world. Unless, on occasion, God wants to change something, then he interferes. The Cholzman Sheim in Meshadid, as long as he's not interfering, then the stars, what do you call the, uh, what do you call the astrological system? The heavenly bodies, right, are, are running the world. But the truth is, Hashem is Barak Mahadis Bature Bahari and Tamad Masadir. God has to renew everything in creation constantly. The Kavana Mikhovenet Shesaya Shita. And he is doing it with intention and with purpose. The Iro Haya Mineya Vega Echot, and if he would stop for a second, Haya Hakel Bilhoya, all that exists would not exist. Botel Hamashiach, there would be nothing. No. What what are the consequences? What are the consequences of this? On this fact. If God is creating the world anew every second, the first thing that we get from that is we are not enslaved by the past. In that poem where it says the past is gone, it doesn't exist. Why? Because you can't control it? No. Because the world today is an entirely new world. It was recreated out of nothing. In the new world, there are new possibilities. You're not enslaved by the past. In fact, that's exactly what time means. Time means change. What is change? Not what was, something new. Otherwise, you're not really changing. You're just dragging you're just continuing. Change means that what was is no longer, now something different. How is it possible for something different, for you to be different than you were a moment ago? Because you were just created. It's hard to imagine, but if God is creating the world at every second, it also means that the world stops existing every second. So it's like stop, start, start, stop, start. So at any second, at any moment, you can say, the world just stops. Since it can't exist without being created, it has a dual personality. It is and it isn't. What does it mean it isn't? How, how is it possible for a person to go from being sad to being happy? Or the opposite? How do you go from being happy to being sad? And then what happens when a person becomes addicted? We can't change. We can't move from one condition.
relation to another. But every healthy person, I was very, very angry. Yes, so what happened? I moved on. So where did the anger go? Where did it go? <laughs> it never existed. I was never really angry. <laughs> and it's about to come back in a second. <laughs> Why is that possible? What makes it possible to go from one mood to another? So if you were in the Yetzirah, so if you were in the Yetzirah, how did you get out? What, what does that mean? So what? So if you see the situation differently, it changes the situation. So the situation was never real. Why is that possible? You see, while you're angry, look at this. While you're angry, if I would suggest to you, you know, you don't have to be so angry. Okay. Right? I take my life in my hand. <laughs> so, if while you're angry, I suggest that, you know, you don't have to be angry. That would not compute at all. I am angry. It's real. So, well, stop it. <laughs> stop it? Well, anger is not real? I'm making myself angry? No, uh -uh, I'm angry. So, well, think positive thoughts. <laughs> How is it that the reality, and it, and it really is real, I, I'm into anger. Okay, well, enough of that. Now get happy. Is it really? It does work. The question is, how come? What it implies is that anger has a little bit of humility to it. It allows you, it allows you to, to, to disregard. I'm not saying chesed allows room for gvura. Otherwise, if you were chesed, you would be only chesed. If you were gvura, you would be only gvura. How is it possible to go from one to the other? or even to have a combination, because they each allow the existence of the other. And that's called Zikon. There's a certain humility to the creation itself. Without that, there would be no harmony. There'd be no movement from one to the other. Everything would be rigid and fixed. So if you're angry, you'll never be happy again. And if you're happy, you'll be giddy forever. <laughs> There'd be no movement or change from one to the other. So in order for movement to be possible, there has to be a certain flexibility to creation, to reality, which is a certain humility that recognizes, as if to say, I'm not the only person. I'm very angry. The anger itself is saying, I am anger, but I'm not the only thing in the world. So if you give me a good reason, I'll let you shift to something else. Where does that humility come from? From the fact that God has to recreate it every moment. If it exists independently, then it has no humility. It doesn't recognize a creator. If it doesn't recognize a creator, it doesn't budge. Like Potter, he wouldn't budge. He had to be broken with ten plagues 
in order for him to budge. Because he did not recognize a power other than his own. But in nature, that's a human being with his free choice. But in nature, there is a natural humility because every second it stops existing. So how could it be rigid when it experiences its own recreation out of nothing? So a moment ago I was nothing. Now I'm going to be rigid. Now I'm the only thing that exists. So the fact that God is recreating the world every second gives the world the ability to move, to be fluid, to switch, to change, to react. Without that, everything would be so arrogant that nothing would ever change. That's what happened in the world of chaos and fighting. There was a world of chaos. It was totally rigid and inflexible, and it broke. It, it burst because it can't. There's got to be some flexibility. There was no humility in it, and it didn't leave room for its opposite. So Chesed would not allow Gvura. Gvura would not allow Chesed. So you can't create a world. Or an orderly world. Obviously, God is above the, the time, and for him, it's all the same. But for us, it's not. 